The Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show. Starring Irene Dunn as Susan and Fred McMurray as George. Together in the gay, new, exciting comedy adventure, Bright Star. The Irene Dunn, Fred McMurray Show, with Irene Dunn as Susan Armstrong, owner and editor of the Hillsdale Morning Star, and Fred McMurray as George Harvey, her ace reporter. You know, no matter what takes place in a newspaper office, it all has to do with news. And what is taking place this morning is no exception to that rule, even though you might think so. Try to get it through your head, Sammy. And I might add, try to get it through your nose, too. Now, once more. Bonjour. Bonjour. How's that, Miss Armstrong? That's horrible enough to strain our peaceful relations with France. Well, how can I say it right when I don't even know what it means? It means good day. Now, try it again. Bonjour. Look, Sammy. Before we give it up as a bad job, let's... Let's try the most necessary one of all. The French for Mr. Monsieur. 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 Uh, you could replace canasta. How many can play at a time? Miss Armstrong's trying to learn me French. Well, you might try teaching him English first, Susan. It might help. He knows better than to say learn for teach. Well, I guess he's just stopping, I guess. Can I go now, Miss Armstrong? May you go now? That's what I'm asking you. Yes, Sammy. Monsieur, bonjour. Monsieur, bonjour. Uh, what's with this gay Paris routine? Have you read the late edition of our paper? I write it. Don't get time to read it. Something I missed? Anatole Dubriac will be in Hillsdale this morning. Well, uh, should I be glad? Well, it depends on what makes you happy, I'd say. Oh, little things. Yachts, polo, country estates. The guy sounds like a Frenchman. League of Nations or something? Only one of the top five couturiers of Paris. Oh, that has something to do with women's dresses, doesn't it? He designs women's gowns. My slip. Uh, sorry it was showing. Uh, George, he's stopping at the General Grant Hotel. Now, you better hurry right down. What for? He's good news. Very good news to every woman in Hillsdale. Yeah, and bad news to every man. Why don't you cover him if you think he's such hot news? May I remind you that I am the editor? Not at all, boss. Not at all. I've got it carved right here on my chest. <laughs> Mr. Dubriac? Oui, monsieur. I'm George Harvey of the Morning Star. The Morning Star? Yes, a newspaper. I'm I'm a reporter. Oh, 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 oui, oui. Uh, Come in, please, won't you? Thanks. Please, sit down, Mr. Harvey. Oh, thank you. Uh, You wish to interview me, no? The boss's order. She figures there's a story in your coming to Hillsdale. She? Monsieur, you work for a woman? She happens to own the paper. Anything wrong with that? You mean, no, no, no. Sometimes that can be very romantic. Yeah, sometimes. Uh, me, I work for many, many women, uh, n'est-ce pas? Oh, good for you. You're a long way from France. Uh, why did you come to Hillsdale? Uh, to find a typically perfect American woman. In Hillsdale? In New York, they tell me this is the place. Oh. Uh, you don't mind a silly question. Do you? Yeah, ask anything you like. What do you want with the perfect American woman? To create beautiful designs for her. Uh, we have lost so much business to your American designers that I am here to study their trends and uh, perhaps do even better. Nice work, I'll say that. Uh, now, no, no, no. You can tell me. Where is this most perfect woman in Hillsdale? We have a saying in America, it pays to advertise. Oui, oui, but every woman would think that she was the one, n'est-ce pas? That figures. Make it a contest, then, and you be the judge. A eh, contest? Excellent, the very thing. Now, uh, how do I make this uh, contest? Well, you go to a newspaper, tell them your troubles, and your contest is made. But you are a newspaper. I'm a reporter. You'd have to see the boss. And your boss, uh, she's a woman, no? According to my latest survey, yes. Ah, uh, monsieur, I'm beginning to like this whole idea. Well, you vote your way, and I'll vote mine. <laughs> Bonjour, monsieur. What? That's French. Oh, that's what you think. Well, George, how'd you get along? Oh, come see, come saw. That's uh, French for so-so. Oh, you 
don't sound very enthusiastic. I'm not. Routine assignment, dull subject, no news value. One of the greatest designers in France. Well, what was I supposed to do? Kiss him on both cheeks? Oh, that's one of the French customs. Okay, so I didn't get through the customs. No kidding. What was he like, George? Well, he was like a guy that designs gowns. Tall, short, thin, bald, mustache. He's looking for the perfect American woman in Hillsdale to make some glad rags for. Why, George, you ended that sentence with a preposition. Oh, that's because I'm speaking to a lady. Here are my notes, Susan. Uh, It might be better if you wrote up the story. That was your assignment, Mr. Harvey, and you'll write it. May sure do be rack to see Miss Armstrong. Oh. Oh? Well, tell him to come right in, Sammy. I'll see you, Susan. No, no, you better stay here, George. I might need an interpreter. Uh, he talks with his eyes, too. Uh, Miss Armstrong, have I the pleasure? Monsieur Dubrac. Oh, Madame Enchante. I'm George Harvey, remember me? Uh, mais oui, mais oui, but of course, the reporter. Well, now that we all know each other, suppose we form a happy little group, huh? Uh, in just what way may we serve you, monsieur? Uh... You have not told her about the contest? Well, I haven't had a chance. What contest, George? I told him the Morning Star would run a contest to pick the perfect American woman in Hillsdale. Oh, that's a wonderful idea. Well, of course we will. Every woman in the town will be interested in that, and, and every woman will be... Uh, uh, is anything wrong, monsieur? Madame, you will stand up, please. I beg your pardon? You will stand up as a special favor, s'il vous plaît. Oh. Certainly. Uh, you will turn around, please. Well, I... <laughs> seems awfully silly. Check. Uh, who in the name of la belle France, this I would not have believed. No. There will be no contest. No. Already I have found the most perfect woman in America. No. You, Mademoiselle Armstrong, are the most perfect woman I have ever seen. Oh, no. Oh, well, this is really so sweet of you, monsieur, but... Don't you oh, think that... Oh, madame, madame, your figure divine, your beauty heavenly, the shoulders so chic, the waist so petite. What is there else, eh? uh, Did you check her back teeth? Uh, teeth? This I do not understand. Mr. Harvey likes to make jokes in a dull sort of way. Oh, yes, yes, of course, a joke. <laughs> yes. uh, Monsieur Dubert, uh, don't you think... Uh, you will so do that... me a favor, eh, n'est-ce pas? Well, of course. Uh, I will call you Suzanne if you will call me Anatole. Susan. Anatole. Gin and out. Oh, you must be with me every day, every evening. I must see you all the time in this week that comes. Oh, really? Well... Uh, uh, I must see you walking, running, swimming. I must see you coming down a great staircase. I must see you dancing, dining, in every activity of the woman throughout the day and the evening. I must be with you. But... Uh, For you, you that... I will design a complete wardrobe. I shall create ensembles that no one will ever surpass. And the most beautiful jewel of all will be the evening gown which every woman in this world will envy and want. Oh, Anatole. Oh, come, madame, come. We begin at once with luncheon. Already the artist is singing within. Oh, but wait a minute. The paper. Uh, I have. You will put everything aside. You must think of nothing but beauty, beauty, beauty. Your servants can do your work, Miss Pat. Oh, oh, yes. Well, I guess so. George. Your servant, madame. Can you run things? All the way out of town, if need be. And I'm getting some good ideas. What about the ad layouts? I took them to line of type. Anybody check the features from the wire services? Yeah, I did. I figured you'd forget. Then run along and don't bother me. I've got this whole paper on my shoulders. He sure is smooth, ain't he? Who? Where'd he take her? Out to lunch. Well, she ought to be back soon. In Paris, they lunch right up until it's time for dinner. When do they work? They don't. Their servants do. Well... How's every little thing at the morning star? Uh, just took in an ad for a Powers model. Would you be interested? Oh, now, don't be bitter, George. Can I help it if I happen to be ah, the most... the figure divine, the beauty heavenly, the waist petite. <laughs> the whole idea, nuts. What was that? Sammy on his way out. And I think he's got a good idea. Now, you stay right here. I've got to meet Anatole at the house at four. And you have to be here. Okay, so I'm going out to get something to settle my stomach. <laughs> Patience. 
Where is your French cookbook? Never had a French cookbook. Cook everything right out of my own head, you know that. But this has to be very special. Something different in the way of a salad, and maybe a capon under glass, and some fish with a thrilling sauce, and um, a crepe suzette, of course, for dessert. Sounds like Anatole coming with his napkin, waving in the breeze. Well, I want him to think he's back in Paris, at least for one dinner. I'll march around the roast beef and whistle the Marseillaise. And uh, how about some French pastry? You mean make it? Well, of course. Well, I'll give it a whirl, but don't be surprised if it comes out apple pie. And say, what about George? What about him? He hasn't fed here in quite a while. I didn't know we were on a definite schedule. Must he eat here every week? No, but for him, you don't need a foreign cookbook. I always say you can make more runs in your own league. Oh, you do? You're getting to be quite a philosopher, Patience. And speaking of George, I'd better call him. See how he's making out. Not too good, if you ask me. Morning, Star. Harvey speaking. Hello, Harvey. Oh, hello, Armstrong. How are things going, George? Everything's under control. Well, that's good. Just thought I'd call. Sure. We, uh, we miss you here, Susan. You do? Well, you know how it is. You're always here, and then all at once you're not here. Oh. You coming in tomorrow? No, can't. Uh, we're going for a long walk. Oh. Well, uh, how about dinner tonight? Well, Anatole's coming here for dinner. What's he going to do, design a special bib or something? You should see the preliminary sketches he's made. Well, I can't wait. The man is simply a genius. He acts inspired. Oh, hum. Am I boring you, Mr. Harvey? Frankly, yes. Then good night. Good night. Good night, George. Now back to our stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, and the second act of our story. George, that's really Fred McMurray, hasn't seen too much of Susan, that's Irene Dunn, these past few days. Well, how could he, with Anatole designing like mad? That's what worries George. Mm -hmm. This couturier may be a little too designing. Miss Armstrong ever going to come back? Well, they've worked their way from morning coats through tea ensembles, casual suits, and sportswear. There's nothing left but the evening gowns now, I hope. She should be back any day. Women wear too many clothes, if you ask me. Well, there are two schools of thought on that subject, Sammy. Morning Star, Harvey speaking. May I speak to the editor, please? Well, uh, oh, uh, speaking. This is Betty Trask. Yes? For the last few days, you've been giving Anatole Dubriac a great deal of publicity. Well, he's famous. Maybe if you did the same for American designers, they'd be famous, too. Oh, uh, any suggestions? You might start with me. What do you do? I've got a small shop on Main Street. Uh Uh-huh. Women's gowns? That's right. My own originals. Well, this sounds very interesting. I hope it will be. Why don't you drop around and see for yourself? Well, you know, that might not be a bad idea. Main and what? Just up from 6th on the north side, Mr. Harvey. Uh Uh-huh. Uh, people who know me call me George. But, uh, do I know you? Not yet, but you will. My pleasure. Sammy, I'll be gone for a while. I'm going out and look over some gowns. Oh, that's just peachy. Mind picking up a bottle of nail polish for me? Oh, Susan, I am desolate. We have come to the blank wall. Blank wall? What do you mean, Anatole? Well, my designs are finished, my cloth is cut, but my seamstresses have not arrived. Myself, I cannot sew. What are we to do? Oh, that's no problem. Patience is very handy with the needle, and I'm pretty good myself. We can do it, can't we, Patience? Yeah, we can try. Lots of fancy doodads, especially on that formal. Yeah, but we'll be in there stitching. Oh, voila, Charie, it is done. Now I can, uh, as you say, relax. Eh? I'll get started back on the sun porch. Eh. Suzanne, tonight it is impossible for us to dine together. Oh? Tonight, you see, I must dine with the mayor. I dine with him only. 
Then I leave and come back to you. We shall dance again on the terrace under the moon. The General Grant Hotel wrote. It was beautiful. Oh, Suzanne. With you, everywhere is beautiful. <laughs> Morning, Star. Harvey. George, I've been trying to get you for the past two hours. Well, I've been out of the office, Susan. I've got a paper to run, you know. Oh? Well, I want you to come for dinner. Uh, may I have that again? You heard me distinctly. I want you to come to dinner. What's the matter? Anatole fall behind in his board? Tonight at seven. Tonight? Well, uh, Susan, I'd halfway made other plans. Well, you just break those other plans all the way. Sounds like a command performance. It is. Okay, boss. Uh, you know how I like my steak, don't you? I certainly do. Often. Uh, forgive me if I seem impolite, but uh, is that all there is? You've had plenty, George. Plenty? All we've had is cold cut and potato salad. That's enough for anybody. You said come over for dinner, not a picnic. Patience and I are in a hurry to get to work, if you must know. So stop complaining and come on out on the sun porch. Just stack the dishes, Patience. Okay. What do you mean you're anxious to get to work? Now take off your coat, George. What are we going to do, wrestle? And slip this over your head. This is a dress. This is a gown. Now slip it over your head. Up, up. Now, be careful. Be careful. It's just based in... Susan again. Armstrong, this is positively the last straw. George, stop acting childish. No, put, no. Put up your hands. No, I, I wouldn't put up my hands even if you pulled a gun on me. What do you think I am? A, a... I, I having trouble with the dummy. Patience, I never said anything that nasty to you and you know it. She meant a tailor's dummy and you know it. I mean what I said and you know it. I've done a lot of things for you in your paper. Things I never should have done, but I draw the line here. Why, I'd never be able to look my friends in the face if I stood here with a dress on and, and made like a pincushion. And that's final. Ouch, you stuck me again. Watch those pins. Now stand still, George. Well. I just want to get the general effect on you. This has to be oh, perfect for Brockman next week. I know I'm stupid, but who's Brockman? Just the biggest dress manufacturer in the country, that's oh. all. He'll be at the General Grant to look over Anatole's line. I'm modeling this particular gown. Isn't it thrilling, George? Yes, I'm just duck bunks all over. Oh. No, no, no. Now, get it, get it in the center, Patience. Anatole was very definite about that. It looks center to me, unless George is warped to the starboard. What's she hanging on back there? That's a peplum. Go, turn around and you see yourself in the mirror. Oh. You, you mean a guy gets paid for dreaming up stuff like this? Isn't it beautiful? I think it's lousy back there. Maybe you know more about designing than Anatole. Maybe you could suggest a better place. Well, if you have to wear this golf bag or whatever it is, I, it would look a lot better on the side. Say, I'm inclined to agree with you, George. Well? No, 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 no. We better not change it. Not, not until Anatole gets here. We can check with him. Anatole? You mean he's, he's coming here tonight? Well, I'd like to know why not. Well, I, I thought we were going out tonight. I said nothing about going out. I asked you here for dinner. Cold cuts and potato salad. You call that a dinner? I guess I should have opened a can of beans, too. And George Harvey, your manners are abominable. Well, you can take this glorified house dress and, and drape careful. it over Anatole. George, be Patience, careful. help me out of this be thing. Be careful. He thought it up and you think it's great, so let him be the dummy this hand. I've played the part long enough. This is the end. You know that, the end. I knew it a long time ago. I'm glad you're finding it out. Honestly, he... He has the worst temper I've ever known. I'm sure glad I'm not like that. Oh, Patience, what are you doing? Uh, there was some lint on your wings. I was just brushing it off. George. I hoped you'd be here, Betty. Did you ever show your stuff to Brockman? The Brockman? That's the guy. No, and I've never shown my creations to the Shah of Persia. He's difficult to reach, too. In a pig's eye. You're going to show an evening gown to Brockman next week. I am? He's going to be at the General Grant Hotel. Now, uh, where's a pencil and a drawing board? I've got mm -hmm. some ideas, and you can whip them into shape, and baby, you'll be famous. You know, it's funny, but I've been working on the design of an evening gown. Well, great. We're half done, then. Do uh, you know what a peplum is? In my business? I sure. Oh, sure, sure. Well, I'm just the guy to show you where to hang it. 
But do we have time, George? I'll work with you day and night. We've got to have time. May I help you? You're Miss Trask? Yes. I'm Susan Armstrong, editor of the Morning Star. They told me at the office that I'd find Mr. Harvey here. But I thought that Mr. Harvey was the editor. Yes. No, he was helping out while I was uh, away. Oh, oh, I see. I'm sorry, you just missed him. He was here a little while ago. Oh, that's all right. I was just um, following up on um, a story he's working on here. Then you know. Isn't it wonderful of him? Yes, it is. To think I'll be able to show my creation to Brockman. Your creation? I'm dying to let another woman see it. Would you like to have a look? Yes, I would. Very much. Oh, it's back here. Well, you you have some beautiful things here. Oh, thank you. But here's my pride and joy. This is it. Oh. Oh, that's lovely. It's charming. Oh, oh, I'm so happy. And maybe you won't believe this, but George contributed a lot to the design. Oh. Where's George? You seem to be very fond of each other. We like each other, yes. But we hardly know each other. Actually, sometimes I don't think he knows I exist. He seems to have done all this for some reason I know nothing about. Oh, really? Yes. I'm sure he's in love with someone else. A woman can always tell. That's so true, isn't it? But, my dear, how are you going to show this gown tomorrow night? It, it's strictly Anatole Dubriac's display. That's what I kept telling George, but he insisted he'd find a way. And he hasn't yet? No, and there's not much time. Well, maybe we can figure something. I always say women are better at these things than men. <laughs> Great line you've shown so far, Anatole. I like all I've seen. Oh, merci, Monsieur Parkman. But the best, as always, we save for the last. It is my most perfect evening gown. It is a beautiful drink. Ah, voila, voila. You shall see it now. Watch the stage, Monsieur. Miss Armstrong will come forth. <laughs> well. See what you mean. That's the best number yet. You're good at picking models, too. But I, I do not understand. That is not my gown. Not yours? Then whose is it? Well, I do not know, but we shall find out. Miss Armstrong, over here, s'il vous plaît. I don't care whose it is, Anatole. I like it. Uh, certainement. It is a beautiful creation, but I do not understand. Yes, Anatole? Uh, uh, Miss Armstrong, Monsieur Bartman. It's a pleasure. How do you do? <laughs> but, Suzanne, this gown, uh, perhaps you will explain, huh? Uh, This gown was designed by one of our local girls, uh, Miss Betty Trask. Do you like it, Mr. Brockman? I think it's great. But But my gown, Susan. I'll model that next if you want me to, Anatole, but I thought... Nothing can be better than perfect. I've seen all I want to. Will you join us, Miss Armstrong? I'd be delighted. Sit down, Dubriac. The show's over. (sighs) Sometimes I think I do not understand America. Good story you wrote about last night's show, George. Oh, thank you, Susan. Uh, Are you ready to talk now? Talk? About what? Why you modeled Betty's gown instead of Anatole's. Well, Anatole just didn't know what to do with that peplum, and he got so stubborn, he just wouldn't change it. Oh. At uh, least you got a nice wardrobe out of it, Susan. That's all I got. You came out the winner. You always do. Uh, What do you mean? You got a new friend. Betty's really a nice girl, George. Talented and beautiful. She told me you work very well together. Yeah, yeah. And uh, Anatole's a nice guy. But he's going back to France. I know. And did I tell you? He recognized Betty's talent and he wants her to design for him. Great break for the kid. He's taking her back to France with him. Why, that's wonderful. That's the best news I've ever heard. For several reasons. Our 
two stars, Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray, will be back with us in just a moment. Good morning, Susan. Good morning, George. On my way up from the composing room, one of the printers wanted to... Oh, no. No, no, Susan. Your scarf. You've got it a little too tight around your throat, and it's too much to the left. Oh, thank you, George. Oh, it's nothing. And your suit. I'd like a little of the fullness taken out of those shoulders. Just a trifle, you understand? Yes, Monsieur Harvey. Anything else? No, no. Now you're perfect. Am I really? Well, just one more little touch, madame. Yes? You need something on your arm. Did you have something special in mind? Yes, I did. Me. Monsieur Harvey, I bow to your excellent taste. Merci, madame. (laughs) (laughs) Irene Dunn and Fred McMurray will be back next week in another exciting comedy adventure in the gay new series, Bright Star. This is Harry Bonzell inviting you to join us then. (laughs) 